video of a hummingbird that came in to us um, yesterday, probably hit a window and uh, had a concussion, had some problems. Uh, he's starting to fly now. And so I'll shut up and move away and so you can you can see his progress and he's going up to the uh, right hand side to a hummingbird feeder that we have with uh, hummingbird food so It's hard to believe that it's the uh, 6th of January, there is snow outside, it's sub-freezing, and we have a hummingbird. Uh, this hummingbird came from uh, St. George, which is about uh, 60 miles south of us. And the amazing thing is these hummingbirds, uh, for the last uh, two or three years, uh, a group of them have been stopping in St. George and not migrating further south. And so the, I've had two hummingbird calls in the last two days, and this one came into us. Uh, you know, it's it's not all about the eagles. It's not all about rescuing the big uh, apex predators. Uh, our organization takes care of anything that's considered native Utah wildlife, and our little hummingbird here certainly does qualify for that. And uh, he's trying to figure out how to get out of his... Uh, his container here and he's doing quite well and I think uh, realistically tomorrow we're gonna drive probably between uh, oh 60 and 100 miles south and release him pro I would will probably release him all the way down to Mesquite uh, Nevada where it's a whole lot warmer and and let him go on his way so that's our little hummingbird I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing our little friend and uh, Kind of go from there. But isn't he just like the cutest little thing? We love hummingbirds. It's hard to believe the when you spend your life uh, rescuing eagles, how uh, just really adorable these little guys are. Well, good day, good day, everyone. And I'm at our local grocery store here in uh, Cedar City, Utah. And I'm, as you can see, I'm in the the flower section here. And I'm looking for some flowers for my beautiful wife, Susan. And <laughs> hi, Sue. Hi, I snuck up behind you. You did sneak up behind me. So we're looking for flowers. Not for me, I bet you they're for the hummingbird. <laughs> okay, yes, they're for the hummingbird, but they're for you too. We'll, we'll, you'll, you'll get the flowers after we uh, release the hummingbird back to the wild, but we're looking for some flowering plants to put in with a hummingbird. We have a hummingbird that came in a couple of days ago uh, from the St. George area that was in very poor shape. And so we thought we'd see if we could, it's been eating nectar and it's flying around and it's really coming along wonderfully. What do you think, Sue? What, what? I think this one's kind of pretty, but I don't know what they like the best. And we can get an assortment of cut flowers and then it can choose for more flowers. Or, well, these, I have no idea what flowers they, they favor. Cut flowers would give an assortment and they'll die afterwards or I can get something that will be alive. 
you, since you wanted to get me something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what would what would you like, Sue, that would be good for the hummingbird? I have no idea. Is that terrible? You get your wife a gift uh, predicated on on if it's suitable for an animal that you're rescuing. That's no. I've been I've been busted. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I have, uh, yeah. I have no idea. I think a live plant would probably be better than, than cut. Okay. But, uh, like I said, the, the, the flowers are not an absolute. The hummingbird's doing very, very well on the hummingbird nectar, and it's coming along nicely, but I, I thought to give it a flower as well in, in this little chamber would be, would be good for it. For one more day it's kind of still cold today it's gonna to be 10 degrees warmer tomorrow yeah if you can imagine we got a hummingbird in and it's sub freezing up here and snow and so the hummingbirds really shouldn't be here but uh, that looks good is that do you, do you like a plant like that this is gonna to get too big I don't know where I'll put it when it gets giant but it is very pretty I don't know if hummingbirds like orchids do they like orchids I don't know and is there nectar in these kinds of things I don't know So we can get it a little orchid garden. Okay, let's get a little orchid have, garden. No idea if it'll like it, but if, if you like it, that that helps. I think it's pretty. Okay. <laughs> well, here you go, folks. I'm buying flowers for Susan and the hummingbird secondary. How does that sound? Yeah, hummingbird first and me afterwards. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> I guess we're gonna get that for for Susan and the hummingbird. We'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. You ready? And he's gone. Man, I think it hit a window and was stunned. It seems to be wide awake now, though. So, since it got brought into work, I think we'll take it out back here. I think it's ready to go because when I went to check it, it was feisty as can be. Let's see, how are you feeling now? Yep, much better. You can continue on your migration. This is one came in yesterday that knocked itself out and, and it died, but this one was just stunned temporarily. Good luck, little Robin. This is my book. This is called Healer of Angels, and uh, I need to get them ready for for a program. Because when I when I do my wildlife programs, I take copies of my book and we sell them as a fundraiser uh, for our wildlife rescue center. And so it helps us raise money to feed the animals. So if you ever like uh, animal stories, this is 40 years of wildlife rescue stories and the wisdom of grandparents. And I. My wife and I, we autograph each and every one of them, but what's even more important than me autographing the books is that um, you get my eagles autographed as well. This is, here's this is a rubber stamp 
of my eagle, his name is Scout, this is his footprint. And what we did is we took the, uh, put a little food cutter, cutter on the bottom of his foot, let him walk around on a, on a big piece of paper, chose the very, very best footprint from that, and we had a rubber stamp made of it. We stamp each and every book with Scout's footprint when you buy them directly through our Wildlife Rescue Center. And so that's what it looks like. That is, that's Scout's footprint. And then I autograph the book and my wife autographs the book. If you, if you buy the book directly through our Wildlife Rescue Center website, um, all of the profits from the sale of the book go to or help feed sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife. And, and that's the only way that you get the autographed copy. So, so that's kind of an incentive for people to, uh, to help us and, and buy the book. And, you know, and there's a lot of fun stories in the book. There's, there's stories in the book about the first elephant I trained. There's stories in the book about um, working with big cats. There's stories in the book about vulture vomit. And, and so it's, it's really it's, it's a very fun read and for the family. And, and the prophets, like I said, really help us feed the sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife that we care for. As always, uh, every little bit of support helps. So please like, share, and subscribe uh, to our uh, YouTube channel. And... Uh, help spread the word about the Southwest Wildlife Foundation and